Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to another video. And before we get started today, as always, I'd like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below as well as video ideas. Thank you guys. I really try to read as many of them as I can and respond as many of them as I can. So everybody keep doing what you're doing. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. Well, hey, let's get into today's topic. In today's video, we're going to be touching on one very specific question of the Titanic sinking that I get a lot of questions about. And that question is, why when the ship started to sink, did the massive boilers which powered the ship not explode when, when they came into contact with the cold incoming seawater? Now there is one thing we need to touch on before we dive too much into this topic. And that is the fact that it does seem like some of Titanic's boilers really did explode. And there is some really good circumstantial evidence that talks about this. We don't have any direct evidence to support these claims because there was no one in the boiler rooms to actually witness it happen and survive. But there is some testimony and evidence from other people who survived who saw events happen throughout the course of Titanic sinking that could imply that some boilers did explode. And I am gonna to touch on that in this video. But another thing that I wanna talk about is even though that some, it does seem like some of Titanic's boilers did explode, it didn't happen until much later in the Titanic sinking. Right after Titanic struck the iceberg and started to sink, there was no large scale boiler explosion. There was no massive event that occurred that caused the Titanic to sink any quicker. It seems like the Titanic just gently settled down and slowly sank, even with these massive boilers and everything inside the ship that could cause the Titanic to explode. So I wanna to touch on that, and we are also gonna talk about the boilers that did explode, and that's gonna be kind of the outline for this video. Now, what you need to understand about Titanic is that the boilers in the engine room make up basically the entire bottom of the ship, as you can see from this blueprint. Boiler room 6 is the first boiler room underneath the first funnel, and it goes all the way back to boiler room 1 and then the engines. So as you can see from this picture, the engine room, including the boilers, makes up just about the entire base of the Titanic. The next thing you need to understand is exactly how the iceberg damaged Titanic's hull and where the flooding took place in the beginning parts of the sinking. As you can see from this graph, the red lines represent the Titanic's individual watertight compartments, and the green lines you see towards the front of the ship are where the flooding and where the iceberg actually damaged the hull. Now the first four compartments are just cargo holds and stuff, but the fifth compartment, boiler room number six, was actually pretty substantially damaged by the iceberg, as you can see in this picture. This has been one aspect of the Titanic sinking that's always bothered me. You see, if boiler room six was so critically damaged and the water just exploded in and was knocking men over like you see in this clip here, then you would think that the boilers being extremely hot and the ocean being extremely cold would create the perfect conditions for these boilers to just explode and cause cataclysmic damage to the Titanic. Now one thing that everyone here needs to understand, I'm not saying that I don't think that Boiler Room 6 was that badly damaged by the iceberg. I know for a fact it was. When Titanic struck the iceberg, Boiler Room 6 was horribly damaged. The only thing I'm saying is maybe the water didn't explode into Boiler Room 6 as bad as we initially thought. And the reason I'm saying this is I was looking up some testimony because there isn't a lot of information regarding Boiler Room 6 and when it was abandoned. I mean, we have a rough estimate of time, but we don't know exactly. And what I could find is that some of the surviving firemen that were down in that boiler room said they had time to shut the dampers, douse the fire, and try to shut down all the equipment before the boiler room was abandoned. And if all of this testimony is true, then that could account for why the boilers in boiler room six didn't explode. The water was coming in very quick and very aggressively, but not so aggressive to the point that the men had to abandon the room immediately. It seems that they did have time to vent the steam and take care of the boiler room and shut everything down before they abandoned it. You see, much of the danger from boilers isn't from the fire or anything that the boilers are burning, but it's the pressure and the steam that they've got building up inside of them that is the main source of danger. So if the firemen hadn't been able to vent the steam from boiler room 6 and all the surrounding boiler rooms, then this could cause a thermal explosion that would tear Titanic apart. And we do know for a fact that the steam was vented out because plenty of people talk about this during the early stages of the Titanic being evacuated. So you see, that's where the main source of danger comes from with the boiler. If it's not the fire and it's not the fact that they're really hot, it's the fact that they're pressurized and that they have all the steam inside of them. So you've got hot boilers that are pressurized with steam and then you have cold incoming seawater. Then this is the type of scenario where these boilers could just go up. And you gotta remember that the whole base of Titanic is just a bunch of boiler rooms. So if one boiler room goes and the next one could go and then so on and so forth, so the whole ship's whole bottom area could just explode, maybe even more damage than that. So if boiler room six hadn't been, if they hadn't had time to properly deal with it and cool it down the best they could, it's a very good possibility that Titanic could have just exploded and sunk in a matter of minutes. Now you're probably wondering, how do we know 
that they actually did vent out the steam and that this is one source of probable information as to why the boilers on the Titanic didn't explode during the initial stages of the sinking. Well, it wasn't just the men down in the boiler room that can attest to the steam being vented. The officers on the boat deck who were preparing the lifeboats for evacuation also talked about the fact that this steam was being vented. And you've got to think, this isn't just like opening up a small valve on a small container and letting the air pressure out. You're talking about an entire ship that has steam and pressure that you've got to vent out. And when they started releasing that steam, it was so loud that the officers on the boat deck who were pre uh, preparing the Titanic's lifeboats, while they're trying to get these lifeboats lowered away, they have to yell at the top of their lungs and yell through their hands like this. And the guy is, no joke, standing right beside them and they have to scream at the top of their lungs to get the message across. The steam was that loud. So there's actually a clip in the James Cameron movie that actually showcases this. And I will show you right now. <laughs> As I've stated before in another video, the officers of the Titanic who were trying to get the lifeboats ready, seriously, the amount of praise they should get despite the fact that they were not prepared for the situation. I mean, you just try to think about it, what it'd be like for you to be in that situation, to be trying to prepare these lifeboats and get them ready to go with that huge steam venting out and also not knowing how much time you have before the ship sinks. I mean, in my opinion, the officers of the Titanic who dealt with the lifeboats should get just as much praise as the men down in the engine room. Another thing that we do need to talk about, and I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, is if they vented out all the steam, how did the Titanic still have power? How did the ships keep its critical systems running without any steam? Well, they didn't vent out all the steam, and they didn't shut down all the boiler rooms either. The only boiler rooms they shut down early in the sinking were the ones closer to the front of the ship that were more affected by the incoming water. The boiler rooms further back in the ship, boiler room four, three, and two, which did not flood till much later, remained active and pressurized throughout the course of the evening. That's how the Titanic got its power. And you see, that right there is the source to the other question. Why did some of Titanic's boilers potentially explode? Well, that's because they kept several boiler rooms somewhat active. Now, they weren't fully active. They weren't fully pressurized either because there was nowhere near as many people down there working on them. But they kept them running enough to keep the essential systems of the ship working, like the lights and so on. So even though it looks like we had some small scale boiler detonations later on in the sinking, it was due to the fact that some of these boilers in the further back ends of the ship were still active when they fled. So what was the circumstantial evidence that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that could prove that some of the boilers in the Titanic exploded? Well, right here in the Titanic's final moments, you just see the first funnel fall. Now the first funnel, which fed boiler room six and five, was completely flooded and no longer active at the time of the funnel falling. So the funnel just simply fell over due to gravity, and that was all that there was to that. However, the second funnel, which fed boiler rooms four and three, when it fell, it exploded into a shower of sparks and fire. And this was witnessed by a Titanic survivor named Jack Thayer. So why did the second funnel have this small scale ignition and the first funnel didn't? Well, it's because theoretically that boiler rooms four and three might have still been somewhat pressurized and active when this funnel finally fell. Now, just to give you all a little bit of context here, the way we know that boiler room four and three might have still been somewhat active at the time that second, that Titanic's second funnel fell is that there's evidence that boiler room four did not flood until around 2 a.m. And just so you all know, Titanic sank at 2.20. That's when it met its final plunge. So water reached the Titanic's bridge at the very, very top of the ship. It reached the bridge right around 10, 15 minutes before Titanic began her final plunge. And if Boiler Room 4 flooded at 2 a.m., 20 minutes before she began her final plunge, then it stands to reason that Boiler Room 4 and 3 may have still been somewhat active at the time that the second funnel fell. So that spark or that ignition that Jack Thayer said he saw, it's very probable that, that was caused by a small-scale boiler explosion inside of those rooms as the second funnel began to fall. Another possible source that could indicate a small-scale boiler explosion deep inside the Titanic comes from this man. This man is 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller, and as he was escaping the Titanic, something happened to him that could indicate a small-scale explosion. You see, as the Titanic began its final plunge, Lightoller was standing right around the first funnel, and he was dealing with these two lifeboats on the very front of the ship, collapsible A and B. And he said that the Titanic took a sudden and strong 
pulled downward as this giant wave came and washed over the boat deck. So as he was swimming away from the ship, he said that he got sucked down and was actually pinned somewhere on the Titanic's deck by like a vent or something. And it was holding him down. He was pinned by the rush of water that was flowing into the ship and holding him on this grate. And then he said he felt a whoosh of hot air or something from deep inside the ship come up and release him from the ship. And if it hadn't have been for that whoosh of hot air, he could have been, he could have just kept gotten, getting dragged down with the ship until finally it flooded and by then he would have been dead. And that happened not once, but twice. So the first time he got free from the ship and he started to swim away, another vent began to flood and pulled him down again and then another whoosh of hot air came up and pushed him out. So we can't say for sure that that was a boiler explosion. But it is a piece of interesting evidence that could indicate that a small explosion inside the ship saved Lightoller's life. Now these two stories I just told you, these aren't the only incidents of people actually saying that they saw or heard something that could possibly indicate a boiler explosion inside Titanic. Now remember, like I said earlier, no one actually said they saw an explosion in Titanic's boiler rooms. The only thing we have is circumstantial evidence or things that could imply an explosion deep within the ship. Other survivors said that they heard explosions as the Titanic's final plunge was beginning, and that could also indicate some explosions as well. But some people will also say that the explosions that people said they heard inside the ship could have been nothing more than the boilers or furniture falling forward as the Titanic was raising to a higher and higher angle, which is possible. But with the way the second funnel fell and with what happened to second, Charles, what happened to second officer Charles Lightoller, I'm more in favor of a boiler explosion causing this, a small scale one. But it's all open for debate and these are all hypotheses. So hey, let me know what you all think down below. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I thought you found, I hope you found it fun and you learned something from it and I had a ton of fun making it. So everybody, please let me know what you think and everybody else, please subscribe to my channel and thank you all for all the comments as well. I try to read as many of them as I can. All right, everybody. Well, hey, you all stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.